Welcome back to a new episode of YouTube Art School. Lighting is the most important factor, in my opinion, when it comes to how much an illustration will pop visually, of course. Like, here's an example of Minecraft. Ugh, disgusting lighting. Versus great lighting. Look at this. Wow. Even simple blocks can look great with good lighting. It's that powerful. So I'm going to show you how to create epic lighting like this. And it's going to be a lot of fun. So let's get this. Uh oh, class is starting already. Let's get to it. All right, class is in session. Pay attention. We're going right into it with the first lighting trick. And by the way, these are all things that I do myself all the time. And you should too. Well, maybe except the last one, but we'll get to that later. The first trick is to always paint your lights on their own layers in your painting software of choice. The reasoning is simple. If lighting is the most important aspect of a painting, which it often is, you want to make sure you can try different things. Make sure you can iterate before settling on a specific light setup. And having the light on its own is a big help when it comes to that. An easy light setup, by the way, to start with Probably the easiest is a light coming directly from above, a top-down light setup. It's easier because we all have a more elaborate visual library for it. After all, it's what we can observe most of the time when it's sunny outside, right? As the light from the sun shines down on everything. Lights coming from the side or from below are more rare. We don't see that as often. If you have additional lights, then those would also each have their own layer. I'll usually just set the layer blend mode to overlay when the underlying values are on the lighter side and hard light blend mode when it's darker, since a hard light is a bit more opaque of an effect. And just one detail, the contrast between the ambient values and the light values make a big difference. Contrast is important, especially when lighting is involved. If the ambient values are too light, the lighting will seem weaker as a result. See how much more this pops now? It's a difference between ambient values and light values that will indicate the light intensity, not how bright the image is overall, which might seem a little counterintuitive at first. The next trick is a quick one, directly related to the one we just saw. Try adding inner glow, which is a layer style you'll find in Photoshop and Krita, as far as I know. So add inner glow when painting the lights. You can use it to generate a nice warm transition between the base color and the highlights, which looks a lot better in my opinion. It can make dull looking lighting feel a lot cozier. Of course, you should play with the settings to find something that works for you. But if you're curious, I like to keep mine set to the hard light blend mode with a really reddish orange color selected. So far, this trick has always worked one 100% of the time for me, it always gives a better result compared to without. Do it. The next one will be useful for anything that needs to be brighter than your typical light. Specifically cool for things that glow, like glares, shiny metals, or anything that emits light by itself. I see too many artists painting light sources this way, and it just looks so dead. Instead, try adding a new layer on top of that, set it to hard light blend mode again, and all we're gonna do now is gently paint in the effect with a soft brush using a lighter color. And by the way, when using a hard light, anything with a value lighter than mid-gray will lighten what's on the layers underneath. If you go darker than mid-gray, then it'll sort of behave like a multiply blend mode, making everything darker. So if something is meant to glow, all we need is just a couple of brush strokes and we quickly get a much more dramatic result. If you're painting fire, it's a great time to use this magic trick. It's the difference between a dull, almost like fake looking fire versus something that looks hot and bright. Oh, something else that's hot is the current Christmas sale I have going on for my entire store. Everything, including my full art program, will be 40% off until the end of the year only. It's literally the biggest discount I've ever offered and there's just a little under two weeks left to take advantage. The holiday break, if you have any, is the perfect time to get started with your art journey. And it's even better with my art program and the awesome art school private community on Discord that students on the program automatically get access to. Don't miss out on this. Check the link in the video description or go to cgart.cool. And with my shameless plug over, let's move on to the next lighting trick. In a recent video on color, I talked about a really useful color harmony called a complementary color harmony, which many of you I'm sure are aware of, and that is basically a combination of two opposite colors on the chromatic circle. So when working on your lighting, it's going to be a useful one to remember. What looks best is often going to be a mix of a warm main light source 
with a cool bounce light. Bounce light is weak, but it's not invisible. We'll always see it better in the darker areas of the painting, and it can really add a lot of richness to the colors when done right. What I like to do after I've painted the main light source is to use a complementary color, like a purple blue in this example, and then very lightly paint it in, coming from the opposite direction of the main light source. Of course, you could have more lights than that, but if you were going for a single one, which is obviously easier, I'd recommend doing this. What's cool is that it works for any color. You just gotta make sure you choose a complementary color, that's all. And it'll always work better when the color is very desaturated. And what's cool is that it works for any color, any color pair. You just gotta make sure you choose a complementary color, that's all. If the main light source is cool in warmth, then a warmer bounce light will complement it nicely. Finally, a cheat. I'm going to mention this because it's just a lot of fun, but it's not really something I ever use. It may be something you might want to use though, if you see value in it, just past the entertainment aspect of it. What I'm talking about is this web app called Relight. You just upload an image of yours and then it allows you to add fake lights in there and move them around to get wildly different light setups. It's really fun to try and brainstorm ideas if you feel stuck. It's also really impressive how good it works if you have like good shading in your painting especially, which makes sense, it was clearly built initially uh, to edit photos. Now, the only big caveat with this one is that they recently got acquired by stability.ai a company I really have no intention of featuring in a positive way. With that said, I would advise against uploading, you know, like any finished piece in there, since it's safe to assume that they might use it to train their AI. But when using a rough work in progress, I think we can get out of it much more than they can from us, which is a deal I'm okay with. So yeah, that one is definitely optional. But everything else I stand by 100%, you definitely should consider using those tricks in the event that you don't already do. And well, that's gonna be it for this week's class. So let me know if it was helpful. How am I going to know unless you tell me? Also make sure to grab my custom brush bag that I offer for free only to my dear subscribers. And the link to that will be down in the video description. It's 18 custom brushes that I use all the time, some of my favorites, all for free. And then finally, don't forget to check out my art program before the second.